This is Harsh Rules, I'm Ben Harsh, and today we're going to learn to play Conflict of Heroes, Storms of Steel, the third edition. Conflict of Heroes, Storms of Steel was released in 2019 by Academy Games and designed by Uwe Eichart and Gunter Eichart. This game supports up to four players and takes from one to four hours to play. This is the final sequence of advanced rules for Conflict of Heroes Storms of Steel. This video will cover pages 32 through 35 of the rulebook and includes topics for fortifications, obstacles, flamethrowers, and engineers. This tutorial will prepare you for the game's remaining missions. From Mission 10, Rotmastraw's Red Dawn, through Mission 16, Dance of the Totenkopfs. So, if you've mastered all the previous tutorials and you're ready for more, then let's get started. The majority of this tutorial is dedicated to fortifications and obstacles. Fortifications typically grant units defense modifiers when they're inhabited. These include trenches, gun pits, bunkers, and hasty defenses. Obstacles, on the other hand, are meant to deter or destroy enemy units. Obstacles include barbed wire and mines. Fortifications are placed on the map during setup, and only one fortification or obstacle can occupy a single hex. Let's walk through each type of unit in these groups, beginning with fortifications. Let's begin our tour of fortifications by looking at bunkers. Bunkers are concrete structures designed to protect soldiers. As a result, most foot soldiers can enter bunkers with the exception of mortar units. Fortifications like bunkers that have a red facing arc may not move or pivot once they're placed. And units occupying red facing fortifications must also face in the same direction. The main benefit of fortifications are the defense modifiers it provides its inhabitants. This is represented by black defense ratings over a white shield. Black defense ratings provide modifiers for either red soft target or blue armored targets. Some fortifications, like bunkers, with two black defense ratings differentiate between flank and front defense. Finally, fortifications with a red defense rating in the lower right hand corner refer to its own structural integrity. In combat, fortifications are treated like separate units. As a result, attacks are resolved not only against the units inside them, but the structure itself. If an attacker successfully scores a hit on a fortification, then it is destroyed. Gun pits are similar to bunkers except they are designed to house field guns and vehicles. Gun pits are another red facing fortification which means they cannot be moved or pivoted once placed and lock all inhabiting units facing to the gun pits direction. Gun pits also provide separate front and flank black defense rating modifiers and has its own red defense rating of 15. This red rating makes it susceptible to enemy attack and only takes one successful hit to be destroyed. Now, let's look at the next group of fortifications. Trenches are also constructed to benefit foot units. In this instance though, all foot units can use them. The open nature of a trench allows inhabitants to face freely in whatever direction they choose. While trenches benefit foot units, other units have difficulty with them. Wheeled units cannot enter a hex space with trenches at all, and while tracked units can enter a trench space, this prevents them from using any tracked bonus moves. Also, due to the open nature of trenches, their black defense modifier functions in all directions. Finally, trenches have their own red defense rating of 16, which means if another unit can manage a successful hit, the trench would be destroyed. Finally, let's discuss the last and most unique fortification, which is the Hasty Defense. A Hasty Defense is a wall of debris and wreckage piled up as makeshift cover. The only units that can enter a Hasty Defense are the ones that built it. This gives players a new action, which is Build Hasty Defense, for a cost of 5 action points. 
Alternatively, one battle card also enables players to build a hasty defense. Much like trenches, units inside a hasty defense can face in any direction. They also receive a black all direction defense modifier. Finally, the hasty defense's own defense rating is 13. While not as elegant as a bunker or a trench, the hasty defense is better than nothing. Fortifications inside a hex space add an extra dimension to movement and unit placement. Fortifications can also be considered open or unoccupied or closed to enemy units. Friendly units can always enter occupied fortifications to join their fellow units, unless stated otherwise by that specific unit's rules. With this framework in mind, let's discuss entering hexes with fortifications and exiting hex spaces with fortifications. When moving units into a hex space with fortifications, they have two options. If the fortification in the hex space is unoccupied, they may immediately enter it, or they may choose to occupy the space surrounding the fortification. Occupancy is communicated by the position of the counters. If a unit has entered a fortification, the counter is placed beneath the fortification counter. And if the unit is outside the fortification but still in the same hex space, then that unit's counter is placed above the fortification counter. Therefore, if an enemy unit chooses to enter the hex space, they cannot enter the fortification if it's occupied by the enemy, but they can still enter the space around the fortification. Therefore, their counter is placed on top of the fortification counter. As a side note, there is no limit to the number of friendly units that may enter a fortification unless specified otherwise. Finally, units may exit the fortification and remain in the same hex space, or move directly from the fortification to an adjacent hex space. All of this is managed by the counter placement in relation to the fortification counter. Keep these rules in mind when managing multiple counters in the same hex space with a fortification. In this section, we're going to talk about obstacles. So let's begin with barbed wire. Barbed wire makes it more difficult for units to move into or through a hex. Barbed wire prevents wheeled units from entering a hex. If a foot unit enters a hex with barbed wire, roll one six-sided dice and add the die result to the unit's movement cost. This can greatly increase the chance that the foot unit will become spent when entering the hex. However, if a track unit enters a hex with barbed wire, the barbed wire is destroyed and removed. Keep in mind though, barbed wire prevents a track unit from making a bonus move. Similar to fortifications, obstacles may also have a red defense rating. This means with a successful hit, the barbed wire can be attacked and destroyed. Mines may be either placed on the map with battle card number 17 or hidden during setup as specified by the mission. When a player is hiding their mines on the map, they can either download a printable planning map from the Academy Games website or just use a simple notepad. Whichever you choose, write down the coordinates of each mine and keep them secret from the other player until they are revealed. Mines are revealed when units move into their hex. The player that placed them then reveals them to the other player. At this point, they place the mine marker on the map. The player that discovered them makes a 2d6 mine attack against each unit that entered the hex. Mine attacks use a black hit number listed on its counter that works both against soft and armored targets. Also note that all units moving into or pivoting within a mine hex are attacked with the mine's hit number including transported units. However, mines do not attack when units are moving out of the mines hex. Regarding dice rolls, only the player making the attack can modify the mine hit number in either direction with up to two caps. If the player that placed the mines has units that enter a mined hex, then they can spend up to two caps to increase the mine hit number, making it less likely to hit. You'll also note that mines have a red defense number, like other fortifications and obstacles. Storms of Steel also includes units equipped with flamethrowers. 
These units are Panzer Engineers and a variation on the Panzer III tank. The flamethrower capability is identified by the flame symbol. An important note about flamethrowers is they have different stats than those listed on the counter, which are that unit's normal attack ability. Units equipped with a flamethrower weapon may choose to attack with it instead of their normal firepower stats. Flamethrowers have a firepower of 3 versus soft and armored targets. They have a maximum range of 1 hex space. However, they do receive close and short range attack rating bonuses. Targets of flamethrower attacks must use their flank defense. And, flamethrowers ignore all defense modifiers except light smoke and heavy smoke. Additionally, any hidden units attacked by flamethrowers are immediately revealed. Finally, let's talk about engineers. Engineers are specially trained units outfitted to assault enemy positions. They follow all the rules of foot units with the following exceptions. All engineers come equipped with flamethrowers. They may enter a mine hex without triggering them. After that, the hidden mines are revealed and they can use their attack action to deploy smoke, either into their own or an adjacent hex. Keep these rules in mind whenever there are engineers in your game. And that wraps up our advanced tutorial series for Conflict of Heroes Storms of Steel. Now that we've covered the last section of advanced rules, you should be ready to play all missions the game has to offer. Storms of Steel has 16 missions, so there is plenty of content to keep you busy for some time to come. Enjoy! If you found this video helpful, please give me a like and share with your friends. To be the first notified when the next episode of Harsh Rules becomes available, please hit the bell icon for notifications. And as always, this is Ben Harsh for Harsh Rules. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.